Welcome to another episode of the American Beer Review Podcast. Good times with good friends requires good beer. Lucky for us, we know how to pick all three. We're a group of friends who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, giving us a jump start on our craft beer journey. Join us today while Brian... I pride myself on not getting to know other people, so do not put that on me. <laughs> Alec... So the bananas up until like the 60s were an entirely different species of banana. And Chad... It hit me like a back in bar. <laughs> Review some beer, talk about beer topics, and whatever else comes up. We invite you to pour yourself a drink and hang out with us. Okay. And here we go. Rip Brian. He's dead to us. He's dead for the day. Down with some kind of ailment. So we'll persevere. Is that last year's version? Did you pick up uh, 2024? No, this is the uh, K-Thanks by 2022. The one I bought last year. Yeah. So uh, let's see if I die. Not bad. So okay. sounds good. Yeah. Tastes, tastes good. So today, episode 42. Yeah. Brian refused to be in such a nerdy science fiction uh, themed uh, <clears throat> review and he, took he, the day he, off. He gave himself food poisoning so he didn't have to listen to us talk about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Absolutely. Galaxy. <laughs> uh, in addition to, we are going to be having uh, Prayer Artisan Ales, uh, Patches, part of their treat. Series. Uh, series. A, uh, we're, we kind of audibled uh, after we did Drecker's Sour Patch Kids uh, yeah. a few episodes ago. We're going to give the Prairie. Uh, I tried to find the Prairie Pickle Beer again. Oh, yeah. So Spice Pickle we, Monster Boom. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So we settled for this. So you and me get to have that. And then we're going to have the, uh, from Evil Twin Brewing, the, uh, it's a Dunkel. What is it called? Greenhouse? Greenhouse Dunkel, conditioned on American oak fooders. There we go. And that's what we'll start the, today with. The, this intrepid duo, we're going to attempt to give you an idea of how we fridge these. Or, no, we're not going to fridge. Whatever uh, metric we choose today. Yeah, we're just yeah. going to spin the wheel. We're going to wing it. So Greenhouse Dunkel, conditioned on Amer American oak fooder. Uh, 5.5%, similar to a Schwartz beer. This traditional style has lighter body with a touch of sweetness, notes of nutty toffee and roasted malts. And that's about as much as we're going to dive into this one. We did have previously, we were talking about it pre-episode, another Evil Twins Brewing uh, yes. beer. They're based out of Queens, uh, New York. And we had, we were, trying to figure out, City. we were trying to figure out which one of theirs we had had. Before it would take about a half second to review our episode list, but I only I re listened to the prairie one uh this morning. Okay. I, did, I did not grab the evil twin again, but sorry guys, yeah. So we don't know, I mean, but today, but today is a new day. Um, we obviously liked it well enough to bring in another one mm -hmm. and a Tavor drop all the way from New York. And we've had a string of beers from New York over the last month or so. Uh, ooh. You got to play the hand you're dealt. <clears throat> Obviously, there is a demand for it, and you know, the customer is always right in terms of taste. I think was the original. Yeah, if the customer wants it, they'll buy it. Not they can be a dick to you. <laughs> right. Oh, this is. I like this. Oh, that's nice. That. And here's where, I mean, if Brian listened to the pod, would be <clears throat> chewing us out for not explaining what a dunkel is and the finer notes of this, but I think this is du nice. Uh, dunkel is German for dark. This isn't so, dark. Uh, it's probably darker it's than dark. what it was supposed to be. I think it's, was it a lager? I mean, uh, typically, a, a dunkels are dark, darker from what I remember. But obviously, going on those uh, oak uh, fooders, fooders. That's still that's not a real word. Uh, going on those <laughs> fooders, you're gonna get a little bit. You're gonna get some of those tannins from the oak. But it's kind of because apple looks, juicy on the nose. Oh yeah, yeah. It, I was gonna say it almost looks apple juicy in the color. Yeah, 
uh, like a filtered not, apple juice. Yeah, not a whole ton of um, bubbles coming up. Mm -mm. Very thin head. But that's just a good. That's a great sip. It's a little bit of that oak comes through. Getting a little bit of that tannin bite, but but a clean finish. I'm not getting a some dunkles I've had in the past. A little too much um, that sugary feel. Yeah, um, kind of coats your mouth. But this nice and clean. It's it's just that touch of sweetness. Yeah, it's like that little bit of. I don't even go a full toffee flavor but mm -mm. just a little bit of sweetness kind of on the finish but then not even on the finish in the body and then still kind of a crisp I, i'm getting a, also brian's not here so i can go it, it's got a nice a slight esb kind of bite at the end a little bit of the hops at the end a little bit yeah but we're just gonna sit and drink beer the entire time yeah, so it's it, a, is. it is a beer podcast so so it is technically a lager yeah so it's for a lager. It's a little dark. It's, it's pretty tasty. Five and a half percent. We we also did we also did just do that dark beer episode. Oh right. And we've been coming out of winter, and everything you've had is super dark, super dark, super heavy body. Uh, this is kind of a nice transition to spring. Hopefully. It feels like. Fingers crossed. I didn't pay attention. That uh, groundhog see its shadow? Yes, he did. That's bad. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he did not see it, so spring's going to show up early this there year. There we go. So that's why it's sunny today. Yeah. No, Fing it's... Fingers crossed. But we've also been getting shit on with rain and whatnot. It's been terrible. We're actually seeing lighter than down California and the rest of the West Coast. It's just oh, getting... yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're watching uh, last night's clash at the Coliseum, which was supposed to be today, but they moved it because of potentially Monsoon, eight, eight yeah. inches of rain in the Coliseum. I think they had it, uh, what was it? Earlier this week, uh, they were showing it rained enough that the track was basically a pool, mm -hmm. and there's it's not designed for drainage, so they're no. just running the jet dryers around the track continuously to try to get just evaporate the water instead of because it, it couldn't drain anymore. Yeah, we were in California, my family and I, um, just a couple weeks ago during like the precursor of all of this storms, yeah. and there's just no is no infrastructure for this much rain. Uh, my brother's condo, three stories down, there was water coming out of the drains uh, in the parking garage. Jesus, and walking around like the sidewalks are flooding. <clears throat> So, so it was like a Vogon construction fleet was coming in and coming the world in, they're going to they're, they're take out the planet. Yeah. Got to build a international highway or an inter, interstellar highway. Yeah. Interstellar highway. Yeah. You got to blow up the earth. Sorry. Got to make room. But if I was going to have a pint with my Ooh, alien friend. In your towel. Got, yeah. Ford Perfect. A couple pints before you get a. Uh, you know, hitchhike a ride on a Bogon construction mm -hmm. fleet. I would have a couple pints of this. Tasty no, this Dunkel. Is, this goes down pretty easy. Uh -oh. This, yeah. You have thoughts? That's what she said. Um, <laughs> no, this is just, it, it's, it's like what you said. It, this is a very easy lager but it's got some more flavor to it mm -hmm. than you usually get um on tabor they did say crushable in their description yeah. for it and it's crushable at a five five yeah um, in a pint glass i mean this would be oh. easy knockback and i th and i could probably drink drink these all night i think yeah it feels it, it that on the second taster more of that uh, kind of oak tannin-ish is building. So maybe I might cap it at two pints. But I... I... So this would be my fallback. Uh, we've had on the pod at least one evil twin. We've had a couple yeah. <clears throat> on or off. So I wouldn't want to... Because it's not local to us, I wouldn't shoehorn myself into just this one. No. But I would try something different. Oh, I'll fall back yeah. to this. Try something a little bit more out there. And then have a fallback. Yeah, and they do, so this greenhouse is a series they have 
Okay. And there's a few more popping up, so I think I I will grab probably uh, throw a few more in my Tavor crate uh, for a later date. Yeah. Is when, that a... when we get all three in here? But it's a it's one of the nice price ones. So Is it a logger series? Or I, just like I a want. Barrel? I, I didn't look that far into it, but there's like greenhouse aged on American oak voter, like three or four mm. uh, different labels. Like, I didn't read if they're all blogger or whatever. I assume well, they're all aged on the oak voters, okay. but I don't know if it's, you know, they've got a, a dunkel, a stout. I, I okay. didn't go that far into it. Um, no show I, prep then, huh? No, <laughs> no, I don't do show prep. I just, uh, this, 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 is my, this is my show prep. Right. This is my show prep. I make Plus sure, all of the beers. Make sure I showered before you guys show up. Yeah. Um, the Tavor sponsorship come through yet? Trying our damnedest. <laughs> trying our damnedest. Tavor, we love, we love your uh, program here. Love getting, it, it's a nice way to get tasty beer from way outside of your normal orbit. Yes, we, we have Peaks and Pints and some other great yep. uh, bottle shops around us. But sometimes when I get home from work, I don't want to drive back make, out. Make and... a drive, make that trip, walk around, see what's there. It's just nice to be able to scroll on your phone. Hey, I'm going to put it. I know my crate. You can schedule the crate out. So I'll schedule a crate out six weeks from now and just keep putting beer as I every week. Put more beer, more beer, more beer. Yeah. Well, we're the first generation that sh- shops online primarily. Yes. I would rather yes. shop online in the comfort of my own home <clears throat> and make sure everything. And my wife, too, she'll do online pickups. You still have to drive to the store, yeah. but you've already done all your shopping versus sitting in not just a bottle shop, but any store and looking at price tags and sizes yeah. and everything. I'd rather just <clears throat> do the homework ahead of time in the yeah. comfort of my own home and then... and. And also, do, and doing this, then I can try out different breweries. So when I'm at that bottle shop, you're not just. I go. I've had Evil oh, Twin yeah. before. I've had a Prairie Ales. I've had a Drecker. I've had all these beers that that do make it in here because yes. they have a national presence. Obviously, they're, they're getting themselves on Tavor because Tavor is kind of a tastemaker. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're, they're curating. They, they, they're curating everything on there, so you know you're getting stuff that's good. Everything untapped is like. Everything on Tavor is like, you know, four stars and up. Super on highly rated. Yeah. 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 Um, but anyways. Yeah. You got a topic for the day or are we going to move on to the next beer? I don't know. Um, we're just kind of winging it. No we had a game uh, set up for today, but we're going to save it for yes. when we have all three of we, us. Yeah. Well, te- oh, you can not, tease why it. Why not tease it? So uh, this was episode 42. And what I did is I prepped a list of every beer we've gotten off Tavor since we restarted this thing. Uh, but capped it, you had $42 to spend. Mm-hmm. And we're playing money beer. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Brian's not here. We don't want to rip the Band-Aid off until we can all be here. Uh, so that will be probably next mainline mm-hmm. episode. Yeah, we got we'll, a couple. We'll see. We, we got... Few weeks from now. Yeah, we kind of schedule all our beer out, so now I gotta play. I had another Tavor crate show up, so there's another ten beers in the beer fridge yeah, that I have to schedule. <laughs> we may have another uh special episode between now and then too. Yes. Yes, we might have another special episode. Stay tuned. Yeah. Uh all right, yeah, so we'll move on. Uh ooh, there's still something actually there. that special episode will air before people see it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, that's true. We already yeah. had a special episode. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. We went to Iron Horse for Valentine's Day. <laughs> so moving on uh, to the Prairie Artisans Ales, uh, we will uh, we'll do our new review metrics at the end on on, oh, on yeah. both of these. We that can way, do while I pour this, we well, can go through Dunkel. Well, we'll do it at the end. That way, the folks watching on YouTube, they can just go to one. Oh, there they go. I they can have to stick around hey, to the end. Yeah. Go go to the. You can go to the end and. Uh, hear us uh, give our ratings for both of these tasty beers. Tell you what, if you like and subscribe, I'll tell you right now. And that's where I'll put the text. <laughs> I'll put the text right there. Post production. All right. So our second uh, sour patch themed uh, drink. This one is. Mm. 
Um, sour fans with a sweet tooth can feel like a kid again with a sour gummy candy packed concoction from Prairie, one of Thrillist best breweries in the company. This tangy treat brims with massive Sour Patch Kids vibes, a tart blend of lemon lime and orange notes tantalize your taste buds with electric candy tones, a tropically gin tinged uh, pineapple nuance gives the sip an island bent, providing the gulp with a sweet finish. Yeah, that's Sour Patch Kids. All that. I haven't taken a sip yet, more so or less than the last one we had. I kind of like this one better. The last one was with, like, trademark Sour Patch Kids. Yes. But this Ooh. one has, uh, I believe this one has yellow number five. Like the spicy pickle <laughs> Sorry, beer. I think I, so. It's on the front of the can, yes. Uh, yep, certified colors and FD&C yellow I number think that, five. I think that's the U word for it. You got to have, you got to have the, <clears throat> you got to have the proper coloring in it. But if you poured this and told me it was a lager, I'd, I'd believe you. I would. It's very straw. I it's would. not. It's not like the. So the the Drecker looked like pureed Sour Patch Kids. Well, because that was a not a smoothie. Was it a smoothie? Yeah, it was. It was a smoothie style. So yes, they had to be a lot, thick, but, lot thicker. But it was kind of a off pink color. This is. But if you saw a pint of this, you would not. You would not even think sour necessarily. I appreciate this because you could have your Sour Patch Kids beer and not look like a. Child? Yes. Put it in a sippy cup for you. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I like Drecker. This is... This is... I, yeah. This is... I, I think I agree with you. This is... It plays better without the thickness. That's where I was going to go. Yeah. And I was trying to... Pick, pin down what the difference is between this one and, and the Drecker's because the Drecker was definitely a Sour Patchy. This one leaves more of a Sour Patch Kids mouthfeel because you don't have – Sour Patch Kids aren't – I mean, they're chewy, but you, chunky. You swallow it, they're gone. Yeah. Or if you put a wad of them in and you just let them it's melt like, away yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you gumming Sour Patch Kids? Is that what's going Maybe. on? If you only can have 100 calories worth, yeah, you got to make them last, dude. It's called a coping strategy. Yeah, it's a subtle sour. You get a, more of the sweet. This is just like, so this is same, obviously not the same flavors as spicy pickle beer, but I did the re-listen. And my one comment was they dialed the pickle in perfectly. Yeah. Because they could have gone way over the top and just, oh, ha, ha, it's, it's spicy pickle. They could, they could have done it with this, too, this over the top. But yeah. This is subtle. It, it's just like a good sour. Because I would take more than just a flight sample of this. This would be something I'd It'd go be in a and nice order a pint. Eight. A pint or an, uh, a couple eight ounces, yeah. maybe, in yeah. between beers. I don't know how this would stack. I'm not going to attempt that. I'm going to keep the second can for Brian uh, when he returns. Yes. get He can do a little homework, do a little review himself. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure with the pickle beer, any pickle is too much pickle. Yes. For him versus this. This is, is a, more these his, are, these more are safer, speed. And I think these are safer. Fl this is a, I say it a lot about a lot of sours, but I think this is a really good gateway sour as well. It's kind of fun. It, this would be a fun to take to a party. Hey, have you ever had a sour beer? Right. Here's one that tastes like Sour Patch Kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what Sour Patch Kids tastes like. But then you could slide somebody into a uh, Berliner Weiss or some kind of other, um, a kettle sour. Mm -hmm. Something. Switch them over to a raspberry sour. Like that lucky envelope, raspberry sour. It was fantastic. We gotta have I think it's on my, spoiler, when, I think it's on my. $42 list. Nice. Nice. I'm glad you put it on there. Cause I had to, I had to make some, I had to make some sacrifices on mine. Like I, 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 uh, did my list and I was like, I feel really good about that. And then I was $20 over and I was like, Oh, I don't feel really good about that. So I had to make some very tough decisions. Dude, the only caveats when we get to the list is those are Tavor mm -hmm. beers. Yeah. And so it cuts out the iron horses, the black Ravens. Yes. Um, 
a lot of our local guys. Just because I didn't keep those receipts. Well, and it was and, and kind of we're putting together a box. We can yeah. go and get those. Yeah, we're put we're putting together a, a crate of six beers. Uh, but there was some hard decisions, and at one point I had like four sours on mine. Went, well, I got to yeah, mix me, it up a little me, bit. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I was like, I can't. I I got to make this a good representation of everything we've had. Yeah, and I'm surprised with usually how my brain works. I was shocked when I was going through these beers. Like, oh yeah, I remember what it tasted like. I re- I remember. It does. Yeah, yeah. Without even having to go back to the episodes. There was only a couple where it was. It was a coin flip, and I was like, "What did I say about this one versus the other?" Because um, somebody's going to go through the receipts and go, "Well, you said this one this, wasn't this as was good a, as that yeah, one." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, no, it was it. Like each of them, I'm going, "Oh, but I like that one. Ooh, but I like that one. Ooh, but I like that one." And there's only six, and it, yeah, it does stack up quick when you're yeah, uh, to bore them in, but all fantastic beers. Which one of these are you going to order first at the restaurant of the end of the universe? Uh, if I'm at the restaurant at the end of the universe, I think I got to go with the prairie first. I think the prairie fits into the universe mm-hmm. of Douglas Adams. Uh, Douglas Adams made. I think all their can art and everything. Uh, I'll have the evil twin on uh, when we're on the, uh, what's the spaceship name? Uh, Heart of been a while it's been too long if i can look it up right I, I i when we end up on a jungle planet or something i'll have the uh, greenhouse dunkle okay yeah i i think there's a spot for both of them um also the this was the one that went to the mex the fabled mexico trip where i came back with the uh sombrero the sombrero in and the, the broken in, in foot the, i came back with a, bro- a broken ankle a sombrero and this book were the only thing in my carry-ons. Heart of gold. Heart of gold. You were right there. Yeah, so I'd have the Dunkel on the, heart, on the bridge of the heart of gold. Uh, the movie, the Henson movie version, not the uh, British miniseries one. Much sleeker in the the move, the one with... Uh, Most Def? Yeah, Most Def. Uh, and the Hobbit guy? Hobbit guy and well, Zoe Deschanel. There you go. Yes. Uh, it was a lot tighter. I mean, in part of that's that's too sweet but American. They, but, but they also went and pulled bits from all the books. They condensed a lot yeah. of it, and they were making a single movie. And I, I was kind of I was sad for years that they never made a follow up. And then last night when I was doing the research on everything, because there was a character that I had stuck in my head, like I wanted to bring it up for the podcast, but I could not find existence of said character anywhere. It was like some mob. Bo- they meet some mob boss or guys serving a death like he's in prison but he's like uh oh he's dead for he's doing a 30-year prison sentence so he's dead for 30 years and that he's just got his lackeys carrying the body his body around oh, until the they make zone. him yeah. i couldn't find his name anywhere but i specifically remembered it being restaurant of the universe at end of the universe yeah kind of area second book my favorite is the I forget which machine. Uh, that Zephod goes in. Yeah. That he's the center. Yeah. And it's supposed to just demoralize you because it shows you how insif- insignificant you are in terms of the whole universe. Yes. And he's yes. president of whatever the universe. Uh, but because of whatever quirk that's in a sub-universe where it was created for him, he goes in and he finds out that the entire universe revolves around him and comes out going, perfect. This is awesome. Yeah. This affirms everything I knew about myself. <laughs> awesome. And that and then there was somebody like it was like somebody who wanted to see him his mind destroyed. Yeah. And he comes walking out and they're like, How do you feel? I feel oh, great. This is fantastic. Like, Damn it. Uh my other the other favorite character, I forget his name, but he's like a immortal being. And his one task is to go around and insult every living being in the universe. Oh, one by one, yeah, yeah. 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 And he hits Arthur Dent twice. <laughs> nice. that was my favorite and but it was like oh but one he was like prehistoric whatever i mean it because did you it's make like, it it's, it's like dune oh you first, can stop get, after a little you, bit you, you can get through the first two books and then it, i mean that's kind of the problem when you make a universe that is it filled 
most of it's satire. Mm -hmm. It's it's totally satire. But at a certain point, you went, well, here's the first two books. Here's all the crazy shit we did in the books. If you just keep doing the crazy shit, the same as that, Mm -hmm. it it goes flat. So you just have to, well, we're going to get weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder. One of my others was uh, Arthur learns how to fly. Yes. Because he just forgets about gravity. Yes. And he's totally in satire. You just forget that gravity's a thing and then you can fly around and he spends a book where he just flies around everywhere can fly around everywhere and then i think i told you i finished it like the series comes full circle oh yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end yeah. it finally makes it back to earth as it's being spoiler Re- alert for a 40 year old book yeah. as it's being destroyed to make room for the interstellar highway i i like the way they did so going back to the the most deaf movie with the they did the Jim Henson Muppets yeah. for all the characters. Practical Great. Practical effects. Yeah. Uh, still holds up today. Um, but I like what they did. It's all in one. You hit all the you hit all the crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. They made it just modern enough. Because, yeah, it is a 40-year-old book. And a lot of the kind of jokes and the satire doesn't hit the, the same they're today. Very timely, yeah. Yeah. It's very niche, our favorite word here mm-hmm. at ABR Live. Um, are we going I, with? I, I would like to touch on the beer spas. Oh, Brought yes, that I saw that. Uh, I it, I saw that. I think I posted it. You posted it, yes. The uh, but it's not. I I was sad, not sad because it would be super expensive. It was an actual full octane beer. It's just oh, it's hot water and we make beer tea. Yeah, we put basically. barley and wine, which makes sense. Uh, because you know how expensive it would be even for uh, a light beer to fill up. 40, ga- 40 gallons at a time? Yeah. I was but like, some Damn. of them were like full on hot tubs. So you're talking like 100 gallons of beer. And I, yeah, I was like, so are they, that's 100 gallons of beer. Are they just, oh, we're just, it's got alcohol in it. We can just swap it out every week. It's like, I don't want to go somewhere where. And I'm not drinking it. Somebody. I would drink it. I would try to drink it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but they people. serve you beers yeah, while you're there. So that's it's not like enough. it's a. Yeah. a they probably started doing that. They're like, please don't drink the pool water. Just drink this, please. Well, how disappointed would you be to go to a beer spa? And they go, well, there's no beer here. This is a spa. You're supposed to relax and uh, recharge. So alcohol kind of defeats the purpose. Like, but it's a that beer ma- spa. That would make sense. That would make sense. Because according to my whoop, yes, I should not drink beer. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beer spa. It's literally the thing that brought me in the door. No, yeah, you're gonna take a beer shower and soak in a beer hot tub and have yeah. a couple beers and I don't know. So, what would you put? so a so a shower beer squared. Is yeah. What we're talking here? Yeah, maybe yeah. a couple like lemon wedges on your eyes. Mm. Yeah. You're in a Hefeweizen yeah, uh, hot tub. Yeah, why not? A little it's good. For little the skin. Suffer- yeah, a little suffering is good. <laughs> a little controlled suffering. Uh, I that'd be interesting to see if that. I wonder if Drecker's going to make a beer spa. Drecker, they may already Drecker, have one. Drecker, Drecker, could you have a beer spa for when we get there? I mean, but I, I don't, I don't want to. S- but our brewery's going to uh, big enough, mature enough, because there's a lot of. Um, if you've got a hotel attached, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, 10 pin. Uh, yeah. is, is that the next thing? Like you see these breweries that have been around since the, since the original boom who have grown and matured and like. Very successful, so they can expand into the into like the Drecker Valhalla, uh, Bruhalla, mm-hmm. Iron Horse. They've got their new um, kind of new space yeah. that they've built out into uh, that we're going to see next week, last week. Um, do you start seeing them getting to more hospitality? Go to a hotel, and then it's the Drecker Beer Spa. Go soak in a vat of. Uh, Chunk, mango, marshmallow, yeah. smoothie, sour. Started getting to the um, amusement park type thing where it's like an all-in-one. You go to Legoland, you go to Disney, you're staying at the park, you're going to the whatever, but this now you're going to the brewery's hotel. You're yeah. going to the brewery. Uh, what else do we have there? Well, we got a spa. And it's going to be a beer-themed spa because you're at a brewery. I'm definitely not bathing in chunk, though. Maybe like just a 
a, a chunk, Ooh, a mango chunk mask. face mask. Yeah, nice. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a little bit of clay in there. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we're the target market because we were kind. We were already on the fence. Back, yeah, yeah. But I mean, back in 2014, like kind of when this new craft boom was, we were late 20s, mm-hmm. still kind of feeling things out. Feeling things out. Don't have a lot of free money to spend, and if we were, it was on. Cheaper, two, yeah, beers. two for, yeah, two for, two for uh, Coors Light nights at the right. bars and whatnot. And now we're getting up there in age, and we have a little bit more scratch and little disposable income. Yeah. Spending something, and if I can uh, trick my wife into telling them that there's going to be a spa, hey babe, we're going at this resort home. that we're staying yeah. at, yeah, you're gonna smell like you're gonna smell like an IPA when we're done. Oh man, if you could do that. like a beer waterfall, I'm thinking like uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory style. Oh yeah, do a little Gustav action. Go swim in the pool. <laughs> oh. Go swim in the lake. Get sucked up. Get sucked yeah. up into the machinery. Yeah. No, 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 no. That is not. You've tainted the beer. Oh no, Gustav. No, no, no. I like the the no the way Gene played it, and I was like, oh no, don't do that. No, oh darn. Mm-hmm. He was he was never disappointed when a child was horribly maimed in his chocolate factory. No. I haven't seen the new Chemil. Uh, I was gonna say Chemilem Ding Dong one. I haven't uh, seen that one either. Sounds like it. I I don't think it had quite the magic, but the Dune two part two trailer came out. Came out. Nerd alert! I think it's nerd alert, well, and it's on. I think Netflix. The part one, so you can get caught back up. Uh, I've I've been, I may have been like watching parts and pieces of it every week. I'm gonna wait because I think it comes out in March. Yes. So a few weeks, I believe, so. or so from now, um, if anybody does a double header, uh, I would be more than inclined to go watch them back to back on the big screen. Uh, the early uh, kind of inside baseball folks who have seen it, uh, Christopher Nolan, him and uh, Bill New are BFFs. Okay. Uh, I think Nolan said uh, this is his Empire Strikes Back. He's going to do a third. He's going to cover Messiah in Dune 3. And and then he said he's done. He doesn't yep. want to do any of And it was like, oh, perfect. Well, cause perfect. Because you can't. Hitchhiker's it, Guide goes off the rails after book two or three, but still good. Uh, but get just weirder and weirder. Dune after Messiah goes absolutely bonkers. But but in Messiah, doesn't he still um, become... The worm does he no, become? The, he doesn't become the worm god in Messiah. That's his son. Okay. Oh, that's right. So this is yeah. anyway spoilers, but yeah, he becomes the emperor and blah blah blah. Yeah, if Brian was here, he'd be rolling it. His eyes would have yeah, rolled Paul, the back of his head. It's yeah. beat of light. Paul, Paul becomes the emperor and that whole arc. Is okay, Messiah. Okay. It's after that, and okay, God Emperor God. Dune is when Leto or whatever Leto Junior. Yeah, turns into. That's when it gets weird. Weird. Yeah, he I may think, start that transition in. Messiah, but it's not the main point. If Vil, if he could surprise everyone and kind of do just that, hint at do, it. do that in third, just out of nowhere, yeah. just oh, psych, worm god, what? <laughs> but yes, I'm 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 very excited because I like the way Vilnu does big. It feels yeah, everything feels oh, big. it feels epic. Um, I wonder if he'd do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Because it because it's a it's a story about it's big. It, mm-hmm. Everything's about the universe, like you know, universe is unimaginably giant. Yeah, the meaning um, of the life universe and everything is revealed but, in the book. But it's like, dude, it's just this giant universe. But you're telling this story that's very close to the best. You're just mm-hmm. following one or two people in, but they're having these universe spanning. Why? Yeah. yeah, that's the. Tired guy from England in right. his, in his uh, pajamas for the entire series. Yeah, and it because like the uh, the way they played it in the movie, it felt like it was just like he's been on a two day bender the entire like, the entire the, time. Up, the the most deaf version of it. Yeah, it was like, oh man, I had a rough Friday. Yeah, wake up Saturday. Well, the world's blown up. Let's go. Let's go down to the pub, have a couple pints, and then go on this adventure, and then. Monday morning, he's got to go back to work because everything's back to normal. That's what that. That's what that movie oh, felt, felt like. The way, the, yeah, way, yeah. the way they did it, it was like okay. Yeah, because they, they didn't. Oh, because they rebuilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the they rebuilt they the 
Earth. They magically rebuilt the Earth as it was yeah. instead of this. Oh no, you're you're back on Earth, but it's prehistoric times because yeah. we have to restart this computing process. Yeah. Well, that was they just tightened it up to fit into one yeah. movie. I think we've lost half the people by probably. Now. Yeah. So are we doing ranking styles? We did one over the other. Oh, we're no, having you, it first. You, um, uh, this kind of pick a metric that you're feeling right now. So the uh, evil twin, so, Dunkel, aged on American oak footers. So footers. Evil twin is going to be more of a go to for me, um, okay. just because it's lager. It's easier to drink. Uh, I'd give it four. Not in every day, but for like walking in, having a pint or two without really feeling in the mood for something wild, I'd give it four greenhouse dunkles out of five. Nice. Um, I'm going to go same, same vein as you. Um, it's not an, it's not an everyday drinker, but this is one that, uh, it, I can't describe it, but like sometimes you get home from work and it's like that, that is a flavor. Mm -hmm. I don't want to full, I don't want, I don't want to go for an ESB where there's a lot of body there. Yeah. Maybe the sun's out. Maybe it's a little warmer. We had this little warm streak. That is a nice, reminds me of ESB, even though it's a lager. Um, I love what they did putting on the oak. I can't wait to try more in this series. I am going to go, um, I'm going to go 4.2 out of 5 Arthur Dents. There you go. Um, then Prairie's uh, Patches. You got to be in the mood for it. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Very good. Um, this is a... I think this is like a a pinter in the pub, going to the bar. So okay. if you're out okay. in public, this is something. I and I would do a full pint. This mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily be a a flighter, but this would be something. Yeah, I'm gonna start off with something a little bit weird. Yeah, um, yeah. Kind of brighten the brighten the mood, brighten the day. Yeah. Hey, we got to get the night started or something. So if I'm in the mood for it, I think it's a yeah, four five. Okay. Patches on an every it, but it falls in less rotation. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not having this once a week. No, no. Um, I would have this. Uh, I would have patches. Um, Halloween. Do another one of those like we did I, with the Drekkers. It'd be kind of a. It, I could see it. Halloween, obviously, candy. Uh. Maybe a Fourth of July or some kind of summer part, summer time party. Yeah, this is kind of a nice little instead of. Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to have a Coke with my no. barbecued hot dog. Yeah, maybe I'll just have patches. Um, get the same amount of calories, but have um oh, kind man, of that. I didn't even look at that. Yeah, nah, don't worry about it. They don't put it on the cans. Um, and it'd be interesting. I don't. I don't know how the sugars would hit you. Would be the only other no. drawback. I mean, I wouldn't have it. It didn't feel over the top sugary. Mm -hmm. um, it felt very clean and finished, like a, full, a fairly, fairly dry for the amount of flavor you're getting going it. If you like, it was way drier than uh, I would have thought. If you said, "Oh, this is Sour Patch Kids beer," yeah, um, Sour Patch Kids, comma beer, not a Sour yeah. Patch. Yeah, kids beer. I don't want to get anybody in uh, in <laughs> copy water. in registered trademark issues. So I'm just saying um, it's not a kids beer. No, no, it's a Sour Patch Kids beer. When do people start making NA beer? No, they can never do that. We can't. They got rid of Joe Camel years ago. We can't start making NA beer for I mean, kids. But isn't that what Mountain Dew and Monster are right now? Oh God, yeah. Uh. I'm going to give Patches four out of five Fork Perfects. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's a, uh, if you can find it, if you, if you see it at, at your local bottle shop, grab it, stash it away uh, for a little tasty, little tasty treat. Yep. Anything from Prairie uh, yeah. is worth, worth grabbing. They got a bunch of fun beers. We've, I mean, I would drink this more often than the Spicy Pickle Monster. 
e- e- even though I like pickles I and do- I professed it, uh, yes, that that is a uh, because it's it's more like a, 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 a everyday sour. It's it's an more, it's almost more an everyday sour. Yeah. yeah, you're not throwing too much crazy at it, which they have a lot that throws crazy at it, and you don't have to roll it. You do not have to roll it, which makes it easily uh, coolerable. And you can go, you can tell your child this to go grab it for you. They don't have to do any special prep. You're right. Just grab it. Grab well, it's going to be an easy one to pick out of the fridge. So it's the one with the kid on the front getting a wedgie. You'll see it. You probably saw it here somewhere in the screen earlier. No, oh, we'll post production. Yeah. Yeah. Child kitchen and post. All right. Cool. I think that's all we got, yeah. right? Oh, we did it. We did, we, did, we, did we did it. We did it. We did it. We don't even need the guy. We didn't know what a... Ah, uh, JK. <laughs> we didn't even know what a Dunkle was, but... All right. Uh, well, our, a few more beers, I'll be a, I'll be a drunkle. <laughs> All right. Our glasses are empty. Hopefully yours are too, and we will catch you next time. We out. If you've enjoyed what you just heard, make sure you subscribe to get new episodes when they drop, and don't forget to leave us a review. If you want to see what we're drinking when we're not on the pod, you can follow us on social media at A Beer Review. Feel free to send us any beer suggestions that we can make Chad go buy off of Tavor. I'm glad we brought the nerds in.